Yeah, good evening to you all. And I can see there are 19 already waiting. That is really wonderful. I'm just testing the audio and making sure everything's okay. So let's hear, I see Kathy there, Jackie, welcome. Of course, my team, Jenny, Susie. I can see Susie putting lots of notes in and please give us, give us thumbs up. If you don't know me, my name is Christian Zosser. I run Zosser Media together with my team, the Talented Talents 360 News and across North America. And are we really concentrate mostly on educational Eagle and Raptor News. So just give me a quick, yeah, you hear me, our Belladonna. Belladonna's back from holiday. Hi, Belladonna. <laughs> Wonderful to see you. So the sound seems to be good. Let me give you a quick update on the Pinnacles National Park whilst we're waiting. So the Pinnacles National Park, if you don't know where that is, uh, you go south from San Francisco, a little bit inland. It's actually south of San Jose. You come to a park and they, the, Pan uh, the Pinnacles National Park made, an, uh, made a very exciting raptor nest discovery, similar to the one that we discovered on Vancouver Island last year. In this case, it was a red-shouldered hawk that was taken probably, we call this non-lethal predation, non-lethal predation, as Professor Bird explained in the documentary, which I did last year when a, a hawk, in this case, a red-tailed hawk was raised in an eagle's nest together with three other eagles. So you call this non-lethal predation and then uh, adopted. And, and in this case, it is in California. I can see there are over 3,700 shares already on Facebook going on. I think Nicole also reported on this. I have actually written to the park. Uh, of course, not received any response so far. I guess they're very busy asking them for permission to do live streaming from there, which I think would really excite you. If, if I do get permission to live stream, I will go down there immediately. However, I doubt it because I think the interest is going to be high and thereby I do believe we're going to have some restrictions still. Okay, so <laughs> that's anyway. Okay, so I'll see you in a moment. Um, so uh, we still are running the countdown and um, yeah, we'll see you in a moment. And uh, anyway, that is the case of non-lethal predation in the Pinnacle National Park. Okay, I'll, I'll see you all soon. I can see Maxine com coming already, Karen and many others. Very nice to see you, Jackie, too, and see you soon. Bye in one minute. Good afternoon and good evening to wherever you may be. This is Christian Zasse reporting live from Vancouver, British Columbia to the rest of the world together with my team. Very exciting. We have another exciting update about Eagle and Raptor news. I've rearranged my studio a bit, so it's all for the better. <laughs> I hope you're all well. So let's get right on to it. I'll just make myself a little bit smaller here. That's better, that's better. So you can see the screen. Whoops, I'm just sorry. Let me just mute my phone quickly. But your pardon, I will do that. There we go. And um, so we come to another exciting session here on Talented Towns 360, the Eagle and Raptor News. Okay, so first of all, the nest stats, there's been some excitement going on. We could already see that in the chat. Well, we do know that uh, that was on the 3rd of May, we had the second egg uh, hatching on the American Eagle Foundation, the DC nest. We did report on that. And now the exciting thing is a lot has been happening in the berry nest. 
So that's a nest that is very well known by my team. Uh, Barry College, well, it ha first happened that B10 was knocked off the branch, and we'll report more on that. That was on the 5th of May, and it just so happened, just so happened. And Nicole just put this news in very quickly that today at 3.14 p.m., and I think that will be the local time, uh, was uh, uh, first, no, sorry, that was uh, yesterday, uh, came back to the nest and then fledged. Well, I mean, <laughs> now next time it gets knocked off, by an owl, it'll definitely find its way back. So that is the exciting uh, update there. So let's first go to the uh, news. I'm just going to jump quickly in and get rid of myself here so you can see the news back better. Okay, I hope this works. So here we go to the, to the right across North America and the world and report on Bald Eagle and Raptor news, and again another incident in Michigan. A bald eagle got shot and killed. How horrible! Uh, there is four hundred dollars offered for the culprit. Uh, again, a horrifying story. How this is ever possible, I have no idea. Uh, nobody knows who it is, but they have offered a reward of four hundred dollars, which I think is a very modest uh, award. I hope the penalties are going to be much higher than that. I think they were talking, for instance, one Virginia man was fined $100,000 after he pledged guilty last time for killing a bald eagle. Well, that is great. And I hope that will be a strong deterrent for crazy people who do such things. Next one, and this is, <laughs> this is an interesting one. Watch this one. Now, um, there was a, an Ozark mum that filmed an eagle in a neighborhood. And let me just... Uh, she unfortunately put the uh, put the format in vertical. A lot of people do that when they don't know how to use a phone. But anyway, I think it's remarkable what she captured. So let me just show you this. Well, that is, that is rather remarkable. That is rather remarkable. I believe that was a, um, uh, it looked like a mallard. If anybody can put some comments into the, uh, you know, if anybody can put some comments into the uh, chat, it looked like a mallard to me. I wasn't completely sure. Anyway, this is again the same story. I'm just going to keep this, skip this one. It's a, 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 again, I believe the same story about the, uh, the, the $400 reward. Uh, in yeah, in, uh, in Mikosta County, Mich Michigan. I believe that's the same story, unless I'm mistaken. Okay, so we'll go to the next story, and this is something more pleasant for you all. A bald eagle was released back into the wild just one month after it looked like he was not going to make it. Let's have a look. A bald eagle released back into the wild tonight, just one month after it looked like he would not make it. Wings of Wonder rescued the bald eagle on Easter Sunday after it was found trapped in netting in freezing water. The netting became frozen to the bird's body. After several weeks of rehabilitation, the eagle was ready to be released back into the wild. Wings of Wonder did the release at Mesick High School, which they say was just miles from where the eagle was found. It's a really heartwarming feeling to, to remember what he looked like when he came in and my fear that he's not going to make it or we're going to have to euthanize him. He'll just, you know, toes will start falling off. Uh, I was glad to see him go. The bald eagle also joined two turkey vultures soaring in the skies following his release. Okay, so I think that was pleasant. I just see some comments that your screen is very small. That definitely has nothing to do with the broadcast because I am broadcasting exactly in the same size as I always do, which is, uh, you know, which, which should actually be sufficient. Uh, this is a story. Let me just close some notes here. I beg your pardon. Um, this is an interesting story here. Uh, this, uh, this is something that happened in northwestern Pennsylvania, and you know they have had severe weather. And there was a storm that blew 
some eagles out of the nest and in this case it was a female that was 45 days old blown out of the nest and all the male unfortunately didn't make it 24 days old he was found off lake drive uh, in how do i pronounce this conit yeah, i hope i pronounced that correctly conit Con lake if anybody uh, can correct me that's fine i beg your pardon for the for the mispronunciation if i did so but anyway the good news is that this eaglet and you can clearly see this is a typical one year old uh, or, or of course in this case much less than one year it's a very young eaglet got rescued had a had a uh, fractured uh, or injured leg and what they're hoping to do here is um, they say well i'm getting ahead of myself but what they're hoping is that they can pot potentially place the eagle back that is the potential uh, pennsylvania game commission back into a foster nest so that the bird can be raised properly so uh, fingers crossed for our little friend here now this is something very interesting that nicole brought up which i really find uh, curious uh, this is has to do with the secretary bird now i grew up in south africa and i have seen the secretary bird if you look at the secretary bird it has long legs it doesn't look like a raptor at all but its behavior is very much like a raptor and this is a this is uh, uh, this is a short report that tells a little bit about the the uh, the secretary bird and saying it is a threatened or a near threatened species even uh, to the local com common uh, resident in south africa and it nests on a large platform unlike other raptors they they uh, they the raptors are not competitive the, the the small raptors the young raptors are not aggressive the siblings towards each other but it's often unlikely if they have three chicks that the last one survives and if we have a look at their behavior it's absolutely interesting because it's commonly believed that they eat snakes but actually they eat all kinds of rodents mice small birds and so on and they try to work out in this uh, in this very interesting short documentary what the power of this bird is so let's just have a look snakes are no match for this bird of prey called secretary to sub-Saharan Africa, where swiftly killing potentially deadly snakes is vital to survival. They're unique, actually. There's no other birds of prey that are related to them. They're in their own family group, so taxonomically they're very distinct from any other birds of prey. They eat a lot of invertebrates, they eat a lot of small mammals, anything that's basically small enough to be chased down, kicked, disabled, swallowed, it's on the menu. British scientists wanted to know just how powerful a kick the bird can deliver. They enlisted the help of Madeline here. Using force plates hidden under the ground, they coaxed Madeline to attack a rubber snake. They measured a maximum force of over 195 newtons, about 20 kilogram force. If you scaled it up to somebody my size, and it's equivalent to me kicking with about 450 or nearly half a tonne of force through my heel straight down on the ground. But importantly, it's happening from a standing start, just going whack with up to five, over five times her body weight from a standing start. The contact time between the bird's feet and the snake was just 15 milliseconds. That's a tenth of the time it takes to blink an eye. The research could have a number of novel applications, including biologically inspired tech. The way we manage artificial limbs, the way we design them, and the way the biomechanics of the secretary bird's working in terms of its needs for locomotion and its needs for attacking its prey, and how that works from a biomechanical perspective can help give us insights to the way we might develop prosthetics. Secretary birds are classed as vulnerable, with numbers declining, possibly exacerbated by shrinking habitat. Conservationists want more data to better understand their status and hopefully keep these magnificent birds alive and kicking. My goodness, did you see how fast that bird is? Isn't it amazing? Let me just close this window quickly. But that bird is so quick, it's absolutely stunning that even a snake is too slow to to uh, to catch the leg uh, abs absolutely stunning what i found so stunning is you find these raptor feet and uh, it almost looks like a flamingo crossed with a raptor it's uh, absolutely fascinating and thanks to nicole for bringing that in now we jump to a, a kestrel nest cam this is season one for a kestrel webcam and this is quite exciting 
So if you want to see this, uh, this webcam, here you go. Um, I am just trying to rec recall. Yeah, this was, sorry, this was Great Salt Lake. Was, so this is in the Great Salt Lake. That's where the camera is placed. So I'm just going to give you a quick look at the kestrel. So what has happened here, there are five uh, hatchlings here and they're doing very well. And so this is a new camera that, where, that you can use and you can watch and enjoy. Okay, so that is that part. And now we come to an interesting story. This is we're going to Las Vegas now, to Nevada, and we're going to look a little bit about the, um, on the behavior of golden eagles. Now, golden eagles are fascinating. I have actually, uh, in one of my very early streams, I touched on golden eagles and a golden eagle nest, which was really interesting. So have a look at this. So the golden eagle, it's less well known than the national bird, the bald eagle, but they are every bit as large. They really end up being kind of a symbol of the wild American West. Three, two, one, it's just a rope, I don't mind it. Golden eagles in the western U.S. have been thought to be in decline for several years now. And so you go. what we're doing here in Nevada with the Nevada Department of Wildlife is trying to get a handle on population status locally. Right now they're mostly just playing dead. Relax. I know you're going to act tough. What we did today is we went and looked at a, a study population up in Lincoln County and we were able to get in and band the nestlings at, at one particular territory that we've been looking at for several years now. What we aim to do is get a better idea for how these birds, how these eagles react to stressors in, in the environment. She's locked what in. What we've also done is we're collaborating with researchers in other states, and so we were able to take genetic samples and, and also looking at taking some feather samples and looking at isotope analysis and that allows you to really tie in on a, on a bigger, broader national level. Golden eagles in general move around a lot so they could anywhere from northern Mexico on up into Canada. So this type of work is really important to really try to get a handle on um, what's going on with the population. They're the absolute top avian predator in North America. Um, and so you have to kind of have a healthy respect for these birds and what they need is they need space. And so when we're thinking about conserving eagles on a, on a big scale, you need to preserve these open public lands that um, you know, I think we have in abundance in Nevada. Well, isn't that a beautiful short documentary? And I hope it gave you some insight into the preciousness of, of golden eagles and how wonderful they are. And now we're jumping into the world of peregrines. You may recall that the peregrine falcon is the fastest hunting bird or probably the fastest, uh, well, it's probably the fastest animal alive. And what is so interesting is its maneuverability at very high speeds. They're recording here 300 kilometers per hour, which will be a hefty speed fine because that give, it puts you somewhere across the 190, 200 miles per hour mark. Uh, what is so remarkable about that, and I did touch upon that a few months ago, is that the peregrine falcon actually goes down in a spiral uh, and not in a straight line. The spiral form gives, gives it a, uh, a three-dimensional picture at an incredible speed of its prey. So by spiraling uh, down to the prey, rather than going straight, it, the, uh, the um, aerodynamics are also optimized as well as 
the reaction time for the for the peregrine falcon. So let's have a quick look here at the peregrine falcon. The world's fastest hunter, the peregrine falcon, snatches prey out of the sky at speeds of over 300 kilometers per hour. This breakneck speed gives these predators the element of surprise. It also lets them outmaneuver their prey. As you can see from this drone footage, it's hard to study falcon attack dives, or stoops, in real time because they happen so fast. So researchers turn to 3D simulations of a computer-generated peregrine falcon trying to catch a computer-generated starling. The team found that the falcon was best off diving at roughly 150 kilometers per hour when the starling flew in a straight path. But if the starling was flying erratically, the falcon stood the greatest chance of success by stooping at much higher speeds, around 360 kilometers per hour. You'd think the higher speeds would make it harder for falcons to adjust to a moving target, but the opposite turned out to be true. Because they could generate more turning force, the predators were more maneuverable at higher speeds. And it was only at these top speeds that the falcons were able to outmaneuver the agile starlings. So stoops don't just help falcons overtake prey, they also help them change direction. Well, is, isn't that a beautiful contribution? It's really marvelous to see that. So thanks, Nicole, for putting that in. And next contribution here is, let me just see. Yes, this is about remove. Oh, this is interesting. This is about Game Commission removing four peregrine falcons. We've just been talking about peregrine falcons, so it's a marvelous introduction. So let's have a look at this. Sorry, there seems to be no sound here. Unfortunately, that happens sometimes. The advertisement comes back. Let me let me just um, just hang on for a second. Uh, this um, sometimes it just jumps back. I try and avoid uh, commercials, but let's try again. Put the Western Pennsylvania up, is the twenty-first most dangerous city in America, according to the National Council for Home Safety no, and Security. No, the rankings no. are based on the number that of violent crimes per one hundred thousand okay, we'll residents. The we'll report says, "quote." All okay. Uh, next one is on this. Now we're going to England to uh, to uh, Yorkshire, and this is another really appalling case where police appeal to the public after a bird of prey. Uh, in this case, um, it was a red kite has been found dead in December, and what has happened is that people put our poison bait. Can you believe it? Poison poisonous bait in order to uh, to to catch the dead kite for whatever uh, to catch a kite for whatever reasons and then to trap it by poisoning it it's absolutely appalling but uh you know it's it's amazing what goes on with some some human beings if you can call them that okay next story here is a very interesting one this is about five minutes long but really worth looking at it is a not-for-profit organization stepping up to save owls. And it's quite a long story for a news center, so let's jump Burrowing right in. Burrowing owl. It's a bird that lives underground and is threatened in the Southwest. Christy Siefkin explains how ADOT and a Valley nonprofit are making sure these owls don't get buried alive. The South Mountain Freeway is the largest highway project in Arizona history. 22 miles bridging the West Valley to the Southeast Valley. The freeway will help eliminate congestion on the Broadway curve, but it's already eliminating homes of some of our tiniest residents, burrowing owls. It's amazing how many people who've been lifelong residents of Arizona who've never heard of burrowing owls and the fact that they do live underground. This petite predator is small enough to yeah. hold in your hand. And he's not like other owls. He flutters around in broad daylight 
and is the only owl in the world that lives underground. In growing cities like Phoenix, that can be a death sentence. Very often, without awareness, uh, people would come in and bulldoze the, the ground and the birds would be buried alive, their homes would be destroyed, they'd have no place to go. Bob Fox houses over a hundred burrowing owls at his nonprofit Wild at Heart. It's a wildlife rehabilitation center in Cave Creek, Arizona, that cares for orphaned and injured birds of prey. So I'm going to do some stretching. So we start out pretty slowly and kind of get this wing loosened up a little. Bob's wife, Sam, rehabilitates many of the birds, like this golden eagle. He was struck by a car in Payson, severely broke his wing, and hasn't flown since. And he's a very good patient most of the time. Many times they come in so badly damaged, there's nothing that we can do other than provide a, a calm, quiet place for them to pass. The burrowing owls here at Wild at Heart aren't sick or injured. They've been pushed out of their homes by freeway construction. Over the past 30 years, burrowing owl numbers have taken a nosedive, largely due to urban expansion. Birds speak to our soul when we see them flying. And to remove any of those species is, is really kind of hard. You know, we just we don't want to lose those. Burrowing owls are endangered in Minnesota, threatened in Colorado, and a species of concern in nine states, including Arizona. When the South Mountain Freeway Project was first announced, Bob and his team immediately rolled up their sleeves. As it moved forward, any time a burrowing owl was seen you know, near an impacted area, I would get the call, we'd go out and remove it. Bob has been working with the Arizona Department of Transportation for over a year to safely capture the owls along the freeway footprint. ADOT spokesman Dustin Krugel says crews are specifically trained to spot burrowing owls and stop construction immediately if they find one. We had over 90 surveys done that covered over 3,500 acres uh, looking for burrowing owls. Krugel says most of the owls have been captured in agricultural areas like Levine and Tolleson and right here at the new I-10 Loop 202 interchange. Many of the burrowing owls were found less than 100 feet from the freeway. They burrow little holes in the soft dirt right at the edge of the cement. They get under the cement and then they have easy access to the water at the bottom of the canal. So far, ADOT has found about 50 burrowing owls, five times more than their average project. The birds are transported to Wild at Heart and live there for about nine months. Then volunteers build them a new home. This is a hack site, a steel frame draped in netting that acts as a temporary home for the owls far away from freeway construction. These hack sites are scattered across the desert in places like Levine, Maricopa, and Santan Valley. In the wild, burrowing owls don't dig their own homes. They take over old burrows abandoned by small mammals. So at the hack site, volunteers do the dirty work for them. The nesting chamber is actually upside down five gallon buckets and there's a tubing that goes up about 14 feet to ground level. This hack site is being built by ASU volunteers and will be monitored for 30 days by volunteers from Audubon, Arizona. We feed and water the owls every day while they're in the tent. Um, and then the fabric comes off and it's up to the owls if they want to stay or if they want to go. Those two are pretty much the only two left after this year. So <laughs> there are a couple now. Hey everybody, it's that time. Each bird Bob places in the tent is tagged for tracking by U.S. Fish and Wildlife. And we are 75 over K black. I'll pop her in here. There she goes. Ideally, the owls will mate on site, and when the netting comes off, they'll raise their young in a new, safer habitat. And as burrowing owls elsewhere lose their homes, Bob and his volunteers will continue to lend Mother Nature a hand. That's the one thing that I'm most proud of is the response of the public to an issue and how much people really care about our wildlife issues. You go, get up. Christy Seifkin, Fox 10 News. Now, if you would like to help save the burrowing owls, Wild at Heart can always use volunteers, especially in the fall and springtime. We've posted a link with tonight's story on fox10phoenix.com. Well, isn't that wonderful when a news uh, center actually do, um, donates so much time to something so important in nature? So let me just jump now, and we are going to go back right to the news now. So I'll just, uh, let me just 
put myself back in the picture here so you know I'm still around <laughs> I'm still around <laughs> okay and I can see that quite a few who've joined today that is really marvelous to see okay so we just talked about uh, just coming right back we talked about the berry nest and we're going to jump right in now so this was um, first we go back to to the DC nest uh, that was submitted by Janet thank you so much something really beautiful so let's have a look at this Thank you, Janet. That was a really beautiful contribution. Next, and we go to, let's see. I think we did that one. Sorry, we did that one. Let's jump to the next one here. There we go. This, yes, that's the one. Sorry, the second uh, nest, the, uh, the second egg that was laid that we just announced. So have a look at this. Okay, so I was just advised by my team there was another contribution by Janet, which obviously I, I uh, missed, so let's have a look. This should be it. Volume 2!
Okay, thanks, Jen. I'm glad my team picked that up. I wouldn't it be a pity if I missed that one. So let's go on now. So here is Welcome to the World DC 7. And you get some beautiful close-ups here. Oh, this is quite interesting. Always horrifying to see all these uh, uh, fishing. Yeah, uh, uh, come on, I can't even find, find the, uh, uh, the entanglement here. But uh, this was in Smoky Mountain Eagles. And um, well, this was very recent. We were absorbing a fishing line in the nest again okay so the the line was brought in this morning our nest cam volunteers have been monitoring the situation very closely and the american eagle foundation has reached out to um to to, to members there to secure proper permission to intervene that was a fishing line yes uh, we are also in communication with our climbers and so on so they are uh, <clears throat> they're very grateful for all the support and here you go again you can see how lethal these uh, nylon fishing lines are uh, I've seen this myself, by the way, when I was out with uh, David Hancock, I've seen uh, eagles entangled in these uh, uh, fishing lines. It's very dangerous because they can cut a foot or a, a talon right off because they are so incredibly strong and they are very difficult to pull out, by the way. Very often, if you look at the talon or the foot, you won't even see the fishing line unless you look really closely and they're very difficult to cut you need special uh, you need a special cutting tool in fact so well let's uh, let, let's that's i'm sure they're going to monitor this ah we're jumping to big bear lake eagles and now for andrea i don't know if andrea is with us i'll have a look in the chat happy dance all around stormy ah this is stormy okay no nothing to say here let's just watch this is all about stormy coming back see that parent looking straight into the camera to make sure that everybody was watching when he came back? Thank you, Andrea. Very nice contribution there. Stormy's return. That's all good news after such a difficult time. Okay, let's jump ahead now. Okay, now we're going to Big Bear Lake Eagles. This is taken by Mike from Facebook page Big Bear Lake Eagles. Mama came over to one of her favorite perches after Stormy made it back into the nest yesterday. She spent three hours there sunbathing, preening, cleaning and shaking out her feathers. Well, what a big celebration at that nest. And now we go to the berry nest. Oh my goodness. So we have reported just now about the berry nest. Now you'll get the details about the owl and I'm sure you get the fledging. No, we can't throw the fledging because it just happened. But anyway, let's have a look. Yeah, thank you, Jenny. This is from Jenny.
Wow, that is a hard knock. And now the day, you see daybreak and you see the climb back. See B10 below the nest. <laughs> Climbing back and they're good at it. Thank you, Jenny. What a beautiful contribution. Thank you very much. And as you heard, there's been fledging, so I'm sure we'll see some updates. Ah, uh, now comes Gina. Uh, okay, let's let's have some look here from from what what Gina did here. I was able to get out to bury this afternoon and snap a few shots of B10 perch below the nest after getting knocked out. So we're going to see some uh, marvelous ground observer pictures here from Gina. And there you go. Oh my goodness. Well, you, this is what you simply cannot get with a nest cam. That is an incredible picture. Very nice that Gina was able to make it and you can see uh, B10 climbing right back. So that is, and here Kim, another one here from comment and picture from Kim Facebook page on the fifth. Um, a couple of shots B10's owl caused the di di dilemma and we know about the story, yes. She was still quietly below and then she made it up back to the nest. Okay, and here we have Bella Donna, who's back from holiday from Facebook. Let's have a look. B10 made it back to the nest. Yay. So let's have a look. Okay, you just have to be patient. It's going to take a little time for B10 to hop back into the nest. So just be patient. Whoops! Whoops, whoops, whoops. Not easy. There's no staircase there. And there's certainly no bridge. Mum is certainly having a look there. And come on, what are you doing? <laughs> Do you see the left foot of Mum? Watch the left foot. Are extremely, uh, you know, the, the, you can see the left foot is extremely bent to the side. Ah, there, there, there's B10. Wow, hooray, hooray, hooray. Fantastic. <laughs> oh my goodness, completely exhausted. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, now B10 is being tough again. Now it's time for food. After that exhausting trip. And look at mom watching there, isn't that amazing? It's almost like a cartoon. Okay, I think you got the message. It's very, everything was very well. So thank you. Thank you, Belladon, for that beautiful contribution. Really nice. I don't think there's anything more happening here. Almost at the end. Oh, no, there is something happening. Oh, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Here, here comes the real, <laughs> here comes the thank you to mom. Or she gets kicked out of the nest. So I better show you that. Very nice, thank you, Belladonna, beautiful. Okay, and there is some more pictures here. Glad to see B, uh, glad, uh, glad to see B10 back, and that is a picture from Angela, just taken yesterday, very nice. And here is another video. Oh, I see, this is the fledge, I haven't even seen this. Okay, this is, so this is very new. This is just coming from Jani. Nicole was telling me about it, so I have a look. Wow, that was a clear move. That was a very, very determined move. You can see both angles from the camera, from the top and from the side, really nice. Very nice contribution. Thank you, Jenny, for just kicking that in quickly. Yeah, you can see the movement behind there. You can see B10. If you look carefully, the top camera, you can see it. Thank you, Jenny, for popping that in right at the last minute. We got that less than 30 minutes before the show. That is really fantastic. Okay, and Dale Hollow, here's something from Tennessee by Kimber. Ah, this is, okay, here we go. We see some stretching there. And here, something from the Cora, some more bad dedication. Video by Uli Reiner. And that's from the Raptor Resource Project. Wanted to share this. A lovely symphony of memorize. Okay, memorizing. Memorializing Dad. Okay, memorializing Dad. Okay, very nice.
that was a beautiful dedication to dad and we've covered dad a lot from the decoronist thank you so much so we don't know where dad is but um i think mum is doing a great job there anyway so thank you to Oli Reiner for that beautiful contribution and here is the decora nest uh quite recent here another one from the facebook group eagle lover uh unite sorry united decora i think that's what it is looks like mum and ume united are officially a couple oh yeah that's the new one that's the young one right looks like they're protecting the nest good and the raptor Rift resource project also here the decora eagles nest and to yeah and to be nest area a little orientation of the new perch spots okay there you go so you can you can see the new uh, perch spots there and some more information on that and the Atso Johnson City Nest, so Tennessee here, we've had that last time. We have these, uh, this wonderful triplets here, JC Johnson City 10, 11, and 12. Oh yes, UME, by the way, is the unidentified male eagle. I find these abbreviations always so terrible, I'm sorry, because uh, acronyms are a, a pain. <laughs> okay, and here the Estonian white-tailed eagle, we reported that. Remember Lady Hawk wrote something about that. Uh, nest uh, that is in uh, in Western Estonia. Oh, Suvi is the uh, female. Uh, now this is the one in Estonia. It's not it's not the the the, the one in Norway. Uh, and is, so you have a beautiful picture here. Maybe yes, I think Nicole said one day we will be able to take uh, a closer look at this nest. So really beautiful what is happening there, and interview someone from the nest there. And here the Fraser eagles. Uh, by Diana Lambertson. Also, this is Fraser Point Eagle Nest, really beautiful. And Greater Spotted Eagle Webcam located somewhere in Harju County, Estonia again. Again, Estonia. Thank you, Nicole. And Pittsburgh, taken by Robert Beaven on, on 5, 7, 18. Yeah, that's okay. So it's a very recent one, two days ago. A fish had looked absolutely horrified. It looked very horrified indeed, my goodness. Who wants, to, who wants to have a trip like that? And the Latvian nest here, another one, brings in a big fish from Likol. Beautiful. That's a Latvian nest. For those who have you never seen it before, uh, they, have, they really have a beautiful eagle nest here. And the Institute of Wildlife Studies in California banding took place. We covered that. And you can see that. You can see the very distinct orange band that, that uh, they now have. And we come to the next story here, Pink Shell Beach Resort Osprey Nest. Uta Große shares on a Facebook page. So let's have a look at this. So baby one is now fledging. It left the nest. Congratulations to baby nest one. Uh, by the way, I took a really beautiful coverage once of an um, osprey nest in British Columbia and some fledging. I, I spent days there covering it until I saw the fledging. I should, I should maybe show that one day. Thank you, Uta. Very nice contribution. And now we go on to Stanley Eagle Nest. And here Stanley Eagle grows up quickly. Yes, we can see that. All very recent pictures. And Southwest Florida, wonderful Southwest Florida E11 has been out of view for almost a week. And E10 was last spotted in the morning. That's all good news. That's all good news because they're doing exactly what they have to do is they have to leave a beautiful home and go on with their own life. I wish our children sometimes would do the same. Oh, that was a nasty comment, wasn't it? <laughs> Here's the Southwest Florida Eagle Nest again. Oh yes, and um, that's, that's, um, yeah, that's uh, one, one of the morning uh, pictures here. I'm still watching the cams. Harriet and M15 were both seen in, in the pasture this evening. Yes, absolutely. Beautiful. 
And West End Bald Eagles here, let's have a look at this one. Okay, so Thunder brings a fish to the nest and has a large hook or lure attached to it. How horrible. After seeing the lure wiggle, neither of them want to do anything uh, to do with it. Eventually Superman steps up, grabs it, flies off to the right and drops it over the side. I love the way he, he looks at the chick right when, before he grabs it. He didn't know what, uh, uh, he didn't want it to touch it. Well, thank goodness for that. Okay, so I think we're getting quite a lot of contributions. I don't know how much longer you can still be with me because I think it may be getting a bit too long. That is the condo cave. Uh, after a visit here from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife, um, so let's have, let's have a look at this video. Condo chick, so that is really interesting. It's completely different. Uh, so, I mean, it's just so rare to see. This is in California. So they're both doing very well. This was observed on the 2nd of May. We have high hopes over the next five months the chicks will grow, develop and fledge. The Wildlands Conservatory is committed to working with the state and federal part partners to, prefer, uh, to provide for the recovery and preservation of California's native species. Very nice contribution. Thank you there. Update. So that's a quick update. Let's have a look at this. Oh, that is the Pinnacles one. That's that's the one I was talking about. But that's not the Pinnacles. That's the Pinnacles uh, National Park. But these are the condor update. That's not the owl. Okay, that's a condor update. Really beautiful. The chicks are growing fast. Very nice. So that's the famous Pinnacle uh, National Park where there's a lot uh, of being talked about. Okay, this is the great horned owl that I was talking about. Um, so again, for those of you who have not uh, heard this before, uh, what has happened here, a red-shouldered uh, um, red uh, hawk uh, got um, uh, captured by a great horned owl. That is the, that is the most likely story, and this is called non-lethal predation, whereby the, the hawk is then taken into the, uh, in, in, into the owl nest, if you haven't seen anything like that, do watch my complete documentary on the red, uh, uh, the red-tailed hawk brought into the eagle nest at uh, on Vancouver Island in at the Sydney nest. It's been watched over 160,000 times now, and uh, this is a similar story. I have written to the Pinnacle National uh, to, to to the park and asked them for permission to go there and do live broadcasts. If you want to do something nice for me, then write to them and encourage them to give me permission to do live streaming because I would be probably the only one and not harming them with a long lens. Uh, maybe that will persuade them to give me permission. That way I could give you live broadcasts. I would be able and I would prepare to travel there, but only of course if they give me permission. So if you want to do something nice, write to them and, and tell them about who I am and um, maybe try and persuade them or even call them. To do that. Who knows? Maybe they'll do it. Anyway, these are beautiful pictures. Okay, now we have 
The survivor, let me see, I wanted to take this. This was around 4.30. Wait a second. Oh my goodness, this is, this is something that happened here. Uh, I'm sorry, I did not read this. Uh, I see this all for the first time now. But uh, there, there's obviously something that happened to, the, to, to, to one of the eyes and the nostril here that was, was some severely damaged. I have shown similar such pictures in, um, in Dutch Harbor. So you can see the, they do survive under these, these uh, incredible circumstances. So this is Tom who obviously took pictures there and uh, has shown that eagles can survive under extreme circumstances. If you want to see something similar, just have a look at my Dutch Harbor coverage of that. And that finally brings us to an end. That finally brings us to an end. So thanks for my team for being so diligent and um, uh, covering all that. Let me just quickly get into the picture again here. Let's see if I can get in here. Yes, there I am, there I am. So I've just rearranged, <laughs> I've just rearranged my studio again to make it a lot better to rearrange everything, my cameras and so on. So anyway, thank you so, for, so much for, for being. I see we, today we had uh, a, a lot of viewers, which is very nice because actually what we're contemplating is this will probably be the last news show for now. Well, thank you, uh, by the way, uh, to Osprey Mama and also to, Uri, to Arimum uh, for, for contributing something. The main reason why we thought we'll concentrate more on live shows rather than the news is we saw a declining interest in news. Not today, not today, but we've seen this recently that there was a declining interest and the amount of efforts that we have to put in from my team is days of work. So we thought, well, uh, you know, this is maybe not what we wanted. We wanted to have a lot more people, but either people are getting a lot of good coverage already on the net, and there is a lot of good coverage. I'm just thinking of Janet, Lady Hawk, and many others, although Janet has been contributing to this too. So maybe the news channels, whatever we are showing is already outdated because we can only do this once a week. So that gave us to believe that maybe we concentrate more on our Friday shows, more on the quality of the Friday shows, rather than giving news updates. So that is the reasoning behind this. So, you know, I would like to thank you from my team uh, for being with the news. Now, if you really come in and say, hey, Christian, you know, that's a photo, that's a media, we really want you to continue, I might, you might be able to twist my arm. <laughs> But it's a lot of effort and, uh, you know, uh, we, we of course are hoping to have many more people. So we will put a lot of effort into the live shows. Of course, Zasa Media and Zasa Photo is continuing, so nothing to worry about that. It is just thinking that maybe the news is not the way to do it. Although we love doing this, but it's a lot of work. I think you completely understand, right, where we're coming from. And I know all of you who are listening to, to us here deeply appreciate uh, what we're doing. So I'm definitely not addressing this at you, uh, you know, at all of you. I want to thank you and I want to thank, you, thank my team, especially for the hard work and the contribution that makes all this possible. Okay. <laughs> There's one person from Hanover. Okay. I'm just reading the comments as they come. Us, Give us your input, please. Yeah. Uh, that's right. Nicole is saying, give us your input and... Um, you know, uh, uh, we do need to have sufficient in number of votes for us to continue with the news. We'll, as again, we will continue with the live shows because that's a very strong educational factor. We're having, uh, you know, we're going to cover uh, more on Friday again very soon. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I, I will, so watch out for Friday. You're going to get much more from the Notre Dame uh, eagle nest there. So uh, we, we will cover that and uh, my team is putting a lot of work into preparing these things and so on. So let's hear, uh, would you still keep uh, the Wednesday news carry? That is the, the answer would be no in this case because the Wednesday news takes us uh, two, three days to prepare in general and the response that we see is just not sufficient for, 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 for this. And again, I want to thank you. I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about the general public here. We were honestly hoping that there would be a growing, uh, you know, that there would be many more people, but we have actually seen quite the contrary. We've seen a decline, which is a little bit disturbing, to be honest, you know, a little bit discouraging, right? Uh, not addressed at you, but I'm just telling you. So that leads us to believe 
that we put more into live shows now. If I, we do find enough uh, people there, and it's very nice to see how many there are today. We have a peak count I just see of 73. We may change our minds, but you do have to understand where we're coming from. This is a lot of, uh, uh, you know, a lot of work. So I do want to, uh, you know, thank you very much for being here today and um, taking part and do give us thumbs up. The thumbs up matter a lot to us. You know, it really does. It matters a lot because it's all about motivation for the dedication that we put into this. Okay, so thank you very much. For, for taking part in this and your continuous support. And I'll see you on Friday, 5 p.m. Pacific time or 8 p.m. Eastern time. And do leave some comments below the stream. These comments mean a lot to us. So thank you very much and good night.